Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a bubble pumper. So, uh, for materials, you're going to need a 10 gallon tote, two 12 inch air stones, some quarter inch air hose tubing, a couple of check valves, which are optional. Um, this is also optional if you want to put a water level. Um, you need a bulkhead fitting like this, and then a 90 degree elbow, uh, some half inch tubing and then a small two inch piece of half inch tubing to connect these two together. And then uh, today we're gonna be using two inch net pots. And with this 10 gallon tote, you'll be able to fit 28 of them. Um, and so in addition to the net pots, you also need two inch clone collars. Uh, if you can't find these neoprene clone collars, you can also use uh, like pool noodles if you cut them to shape. Um, these are just meant to squeeze around the clones and then pop into the lid like this. <coughs> So we'll also need a two inch hole saw for the net pots, uh, a one and a half inch hole saw for the water level, some clippers for trimming off the bottom of the net pots, and a sharp knife for cleaning out the holes after we finish drilling them, a sharpie for tracing out where we're going to drill the holes, and then uh, also this big air pump for uh, blowing air through these air stones. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is the net pots, sharpie, and a lid. So you want to lay the net pots out in a 4x7 pattern, uh, we'll, or however many will fit on your lid. This lid will fit 28. So this doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but you want to make sure you have at least a little bit of space between the cups. So when you drill your holes, you don't uh, you have something to actually support them. Okay, that's probably good enough. All right. So next, uh, after you get your cups aligned, you want to go ahead and uh, trace at least a couple like lines around the outside of them. You don't have to do a full circle, but enough to know where your center is. I do like one on each side, like this. And then after I use the cup, I pick it up so it doesn't uh, get in the way when I'm drawing the rest of the lines. Okay, so next step, after you finish tracing out all the circles, you're going to need your 2 inch hole saw and your drill. Leave the lid on top of the bin so it'll catch all the plastic shavings and then cut out all the holes that you need for your net pots. Okay, so after you finish drilling all the holes, the next step is going to be to clean up all this plastic mess that's left around the edges. So a good way to do that is with a sharp knife like a box cutter. Uh, if you only have some tiny pieces like this, uh, you can burn them off with a lighter, you just have to be very careful. It does not have to be perfect, you just want to get most of it off. So you want to make sure to flip it over and clean both sides, although the bottom is usually nowhere near as bad as the top.
Okay, once you finish cleaning up these holes, uh, the next step is to install the water level indicator if you're planning on including one of those. Uh, so go ahead and grab your one and a half inch hole saw and then all the other parts you're going to need to assemble that. So uh, let's go ahead and start by drilling the hole. To do that, you want to pick a spot um, pretty close to the bottom, but not all the way down where the plastic bands to curve. Uh, somewhere about right here. Let's see if I can get this where y'all can see it. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect, just uh, kind of, you can kind of eyeball it. So just like uh, whenever you cut the holes on top, uh, you want to go ahead and clean up the, uh, the inside plastic. And let's go ahead and dump all this stuff in the trash. Alright, so now that we got the hole drilled for this water level, it's time to install it. So the first thing you need to do is uh, unscrew this piece off this bulkhead fitting. Uh, make sure that the o-ring is installed here on the inside piece. The inside piece just slips right through the hole uh, and you can see it's too large to go all the way through. On the outside make sure you have the flat side of this, uh, this ring and just tighten it down and give it a uh, pretty good Pretty good hand tightening, but there's no need to, uh, to get tools involved. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but uh, you actually get the O-ring squished down pretty well just uh, from hand tightening it, and it makes a really good seal. Next, take your two pieces of tubing and your 90 degree elbow. Push the two inch piece of black inch tubing on pretty much as far as it'll go. And then uh, the same thing with the blue. So if you're concerned about leaks, you can secure this in place with the hose clamp, but uh, since there's no pressure, uh, there's really no point. The chances of this leaking are really minimal. Uh, I've never bothered using one. So after you get this together, just go ahead and push it on the outside right here, facing up. You twist it back and forth, makes it easier. I forgot to mention you will need something to secure this in place. Uh, I like to use a piece of wire because it's easy to remove and then you can turn this upside down to drain the reservoir. So uh, turn this up facing this way and then run this around the outside up through the holes in the handle and then just twist it together. It doesn't have to be very tight because again you're just holding it upright. Uh, there's no need to like twist it tight enough where it pinches the hose. Okay, so after installing the water indicator, the next step is to drill the holes for the air tubes. I like to do that on the opposite end from the water level indicator. So remove the lid to make it easier to see where to drill. And uh, I like to drill on these buckets in this slanted piece right here, uh, just two holes somewhere towards the middle, like facing down at an angle like this. Just like all the other holes we drilled, you'll want to clean up the plastic shavings around the edge. Alright, now that we have the holes drilled for the air tubes, it's time to install the air stones. You'll need two tubes. Uh, how long you cut them is up to you. It depends on how far you're going to have your air pump away from the cylinder. Uh, mine's going to be pretty close, so uh, I only cut about three or four feet. Push each tube uh, through a hole. It should be a pretty tight fit, so uh, it might be kind of difficult. After you get the hose through the, uh, the hole, go ahead and attach the, the air stone to this end. 
you want to have just enough hose inside the bucket that this will lay flat, but uh, pull out all the slack. Do the same with the other air stem. If you're installing check valves, which uh, the purpose of these is to prevent any water from siphoning through the air stone back down these tubes and into your air pump, is uh, they're really not necessary. All you need to do is mount the air pump somewhere above water level, but uh, still they give a little bit of peace of mind, again, if you're worried about leaks. Uh, they have uh, a one-way uh, valve inside them. So you got to make sure that you place it the right direction. So this says out right here, if you can read that. So that will need to go facing this direction, uh, as in like out from the, the, air, the air pump. Install the little short hoses that are going to go to the air pump on the inside. The out in. Install the outs. Alright, now our bucket is pretty much complete at this point. Uh, all that's left is to cut the bottoms out of these net pots before installing them. So I like to take just a small pair of wire cutters like this and uh, cut it right here on these ones at this center line right here. Uh, this allows the stems to like poke through the bottom and it's easier to remove plants without the roots getting tangled in the sides. Uh, the only purpose of these net pots really is to hold the clone collars because this plastic is too thin to hold it by himself. Clone collar just fits inside like this. After you finish cutting out the bottoms and the rest of the net pots, go ahead and install all of them. Put a clone collar in each net pot. Even if you don't have plants in them, it's important to keep the clone collars or something in here uh, because it'll block light to the reservoir and prevent uh, algae growth. You don't want light to get into the reservoir. Uh, that's also why it's important to use an opaque container like this. Uh, if you get a clear container, you can cover it in foil or paint it black or something, but it's easier to just uh, buy one that's already dark like this. Oh, and if you do spray paint it, spray paint the outside, not the inside. Alright, at this point, the only thing left to do is uh, fill it up with water and attach the air pump. Here are two uh, bubble cloners that I built previously that are already full of plants. The propagation domes on top aren't really necessary with this type of cloner. Uh, normally uh, with cuttings you would put something like this on top to keep humidity up to keep the leaves from wilting but um, I mostly use them to keep the cat from eating the leaves. Uh, they really aren't necessary if you put them up somewhere out of reach. I'll take this off. Uh, in this uh, in this cloner right here we have a bunch of uh, Monstera Panati Partita, some Raphidophora Tetrasperma, uh, some Monstera Stanoyana Albo, and uh, some Monstera Dubia cuttings. This one over here is a really good example. So this is a Monstera Panati Partita and uh, I cut it about 11 days ago and uh, this is how much roots it's grown since then. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on camera but um, down here the roots that have already reached the water are smooth water roots but up here uh, the roots that are still in the air are fuzzy similar to uh, the roots you would see in soil or in um, 
if you're propagating in sphagnum moss. And so that makes it much easier to transplant these to soil. There's a lot less shock than there is if you're transplanting something from uh, that's been rooted in just water. If we lift the lid, uh, you can see the, the water level does not reach all the way up to the top. So the idea with the bubble cloner is uh, you want the bottoms of the cuttings to hang in the air above the water and the bubbles popping splash the bottom of the pots with water to keep them wet, but um, the roots hang in the air so you end up getting fuzzy roots instead of water roots. This uh, Monstera Stanoyana cutting is only seven days old. I've had ones take uh, over a month to root, just uh, propagated in plain water. Uh, even this cane begonia cutting has, uh, has started showing roots. No root yet on this dubia. Most of the dubias over here though do have roots. Monstera Standoyana uh, tip cutting. <laughs> 